Hi, and welcome back to the Dino Dungeon devlog. Before we start, I just wanted to tell you that I hope you're all staying healthy during this lockdown situation, which kind of sucks. Obviously, I'm not going to go to the barbers anytime soon, so I'm just going to grow my hair. And while I'm at it, let's just let my beard just do whatever the hell it wants. Let's just, let's just see how far it goes. Today, in the devlog, I wanted to talk about saving and loading. Dino Dungeon is a game where you unlock levels, which means that you need levels to be unlocked, which means that when you leave and come back to the game, you expect those levels to be unlocked. And not only are there levels to unlock, but there are characters to unlock too. When you unlock a new dinosaur, you expect that dinosaur to come with you to the next level, or even back in time to previous levels. So all along, I have actually been using player prefs, and player prefs are actually really excellent for prototyping a game. So as we can see here, I have level one unlocked because I'm in level one and I have my green dinosaur unlocked. And these are um, these are the player prefs. You have a string, which is the key, and you have a value, which is the value, I guess. And as you can see, if I play the game, when I get to this next door, level two unlocks. Since I'm using the player prefs editor, I can actually add my own player prefs so let's go get the red dino in level 7 by typing level 7 and then 1 and then I can now go to my level select and as you can see um, 7 is unlocked and also these this level select is using these player prefs to know what what levels I can go to. I've done some code here that when the, a dino that is caged is in the scene, the dino is put in the player prefs but with a value of minus one. Now zero means not unlocked, one means unlocked. Minus one really means you've discovered it. But as you can see, if you look at this minus one value as I kick the cage and unlock him, that minus one has turned into a one, which means that this red dino is now unlocked. And of course the whole point is that now that I've unlocked that red dino, when I make my way to the next scene, Red Dino has come with me because the game has read the player prefs. However, I need to inform you of something. To set and get a player pref is like one line of code. I have player prefs everywhere in my code. And this seems great. It seems like a great idea. And I have a player prefs editor so I can debug my game, which is really useful. However, I'm going to say that's really useful for prototyping. It's not so good if I want to ever release this game because excuse my dark mode but if we take a look at the unity player prefs uh, scripting API you can see that on windows player prefs is stored in the registry here's my registry dino dungeon has an entry in the registry I've been playing a build of the game so you can see green red yellow level one two three through to eight um, and you could actually modify these if you wanted to. For mobile and Mac OS and Linux, uh, player prefs gets put into the file system somewhere. But for Windows, it gets put in the registry. And it's kind of cruel that if you wanted to delete your save, I would need to tell you to go to your Windows registry, which is something that a lot of people have never done before and look for something that you've never seen before and start deleting stuff and it's a place where you don't really want to go unless you know what you're doing so the solution to get this game out of a prototype sort of looking feel and into a more traditional releasable game is to yank away all this player prefs code and put in a, um, a save file system. So instead of using player prefs, which is insecure, kind of cruel for Windows users, and just not very nice for the player, um, we're going to implement a save file, a save file system instead. Brackies actually has a decent tutorial on how to create a save and load system in Unity. Here he's creating a player data file, and these are the things that he wants. I have done something a little bit different. Every level, or even better, every scene has a save object, and the save object has nothing but a save script. And what this save script is in charge of is saving the data and also loading the data. This is a file name, and the most important part of this, really, my saving grace, is this application.persistentdatapath. This is provided by Unity. In the scripting API, we can see that depending on what device you have, it will be in this expected place and more importantly for Windows it will be in a file path somewhat like this. So 
you will be able to find your your save file and delete it if you wanted to. A game data object is created using this. The game data object is what really replaces our um, player preps. We have a variable, a property even, for each of the dinosaurs. I want to experiment with ability, so I'm going to make them unlockable too. So we have a set of properties for the abilities. Instead of making one piece of data for each level, I've decided to do a levels unlocked, which is just an integer which will denote how many levels you've unlocked. On creation of this data object, um, it will fill itself out to meet the requirements of the beginning of the game, and there's also a bigger constructor where you could set stuff up. But really, the design of this is um, the save file is capable of giving you a reference to its game data object, and you can change the game data object, and then you can say save game data, and it will save the object as a file. For example, now when the cage is destroyed, it will figure out what dinosaur was in the cage and whatever name is met, it will change the game data object to unlock the dinosaur. Because you've just changed game data, you can ask the save to save the game data. Another example is um, this script called Level End. Uh, this script is on the doors of the levels and if the player touches the door, it means that it's ready to go to the next level. Here we grab the level number which the door leads to and if the uh, levels unlocked is less than that number, then we set it equal to that number. So then we say, hey, we just changed game data, please save that to the file. And as you can see here, um, the door has level end in it and has a reference to save. Even the cage has a cage script, which has a reference to the save object here again. I absolutely just blazed through all of that really quickly but I am not a tutorial channel however if you wanted to learn uh, the aspects of this video I would strongly recommend this video by Brackies uh, it will get you started and then for something more serious there is this uh, Unity forum post which really helped me out and this guy is doing I'm doing something like almost very similar to him but I found that I need to make sure that I load this file before other objects get to their start so I am using awake and awake runs before start so I can guarantee that the file will be created or loaded before others because I am using awake. Another thing is that you're probably wondering where I got this player prefs editor it's not off the asset store it is actually downloadable from github. Sabersaurus which is a cool name has created his own player prefs editor which is free and you download it and I think you just drag it into Unity? I can't remember. At this somewhat difficult time, I just want to remind you that if you need content to consume, I have a podcast that is called the Super Salty Podcast about video games. I'm trying to keep the podcast going because it's a, it's a long form piece of content that can use up quite a lot of your time whilst we're all kind of stuck inside. Also it gives me something to do and it's a sanity check. Uh, Roughly once a week. There was a technical difficulty last week. I'm sorry. I have a Patreon that if you want to help fund this project, I'd really super appreciate it. If giving money isn't a jam, I have a Discord server. Um, very recently in the show off, I have been learning Blender. Everyone who learns Blender makes a donut because that's what you do. You follow Blender Guru's donut tutorial. Thank you for watching this episode of the Dino Dungeon Devlog. I shall see you next time. Goodbye.